And before we continue with the video, just a special thank you and a shout out to my Patreons and my YouTube channel members, Foozle CC, Jet Simon, Lighting Cat, Olivia Bernier, Yanni Boy, Seth Cobalt, Amari Lewis, Fan Van Zan, Rob, Matt, Retro Galaxy, Endmark Games, Tor Alex Anderson, Jared Dumont, Martin K, and 60 Plus Game Dev. For more information about what's on offer with the Patreon, there's a link in the description. Hey everyone, welcome back. In today's episode, we're going to be adding in a title screen and we're going to be adding a couple of bits to the game. Firstly, you'll notice that when he hits the floor, we don't die, so we need to fix that first and foremost. So let's get back into the event sheet. Let's go back down to collisions where it says player on collision with pipes. Let's go ahead and click in just after the arrow where the player and the on collisions with pipes are and push C on the keyboard to add a condition. And then we're going to say player and we're going to say is on floor. And now we're going to turn this into an or block, which basically means that either one of these statements can be true. So at the moment, it's an and block. So it's saying that both of these must be true for this to happen. If we go ahead and click on the green arrow and select the whole block and push Y on the keyboard, then you're going to change that to an or block, which means that if either of these are true, then we can run this action. There you go. We land on the floor and it's game over. Now we've got an issue where when we start the game, it immediately drops us to the floor, giving the player no time to react. So we need to give a bit of a countdown. So let's go back to the event sheet on start of layout. Now we've got this Boolean here that says game over equals true. And we set it to false immediately when the game begins. So, so the first thing we need to do is come down and add an action. And we need to say player and we need to set the platform behavior to disabled when we start the game. And then what that's going to do is going to disable the gravity. So he's not going to fall. He's just going to sit there. However, the pipes are still going to come through. So what we need to do now is go down to the pipes. And it says every pipe speed seconds, we create these objects. Now we only want this to run when the game has started. So one of the ways we can fix this is by disabling the pipes group until we're ready to start the game. So let's go ahead and add an action. Go system, set group active, and that group is going to be pipes. We're going to drag that up to the top and we're going to deactivate. So we're not going to have the pipes come in. So now when we play, they're not going to spawn in and they're not going to move towards us because the group isn't active. So that code cannot run. So we'll just sit there now suspended until we're ready to go. And when we start the game, we want to give the player the option to decide when the game begins. And that should be on a click. So when they make their first click, that's when the game starts. Now, obviously, we've got the player spinning around which is this player controls group. So let's go ahead and disable that. So set group active, player controls deactivated, pop that at the top there. Let's play it again. And now we're just sat there in midair waiting to start the game. Now we need to put in an event that says when we touch the screen, let's make all of those groups active again. So under setup, because it's going to be when we start the game, we're going to add, a, add an event and we're going to say touch. And we're going to say on any touch start. So as soon as the finger touches the screen, we're going to now, in fact, let's go ahead and use that to set game over to false. We're also going to want to add a condition on that to make sure that that's only relevant when game over is true. So again, click on this little middle section here, push C on the keyboard, go to system, and then we're going to check that Boolean game over and we're going to leave it as, oh, we're going to leave it as true. So when we touch the screen, if we're in game over, we set game over to false. Now let's come down and add another event and say system. And again, let's say, let's compare that game over uh, variable. I'm going to say if game over is true, then we're going to want to bring those events down and disable it. So it doesn't matter that they're down here now rather than up at the top because we start the game game over true, which means that these will effectively be defaulted. So there we go. Now we're going to put an else statement on this by pushing X and we're going to reverse this. So we can copy those out by holding control on the keyboard. And we're going to say enabled and we're going to say activated and we're going to say activated. 
Now when we touch the screen, we're going to set game over to true. Sorry, game over to false, which means that this block here will be running. There we go. Now the pipe should start to come in. And the game has begun. We die. We try again. And we're ready to go until we touch the screen. Nothing else is running. We start the screen and off we go. Although we're disabling now the player's action as soon as we hit the pipe, which is what we don't want. So let's have a look at why that's happening. So we've got this collision down here, which says set game over to true. And that's happening immediately when we collide with either the floor or the pipe. So let's go ahead and push control X to cut that because we're going to want to put it back in. But I'm going to put it back in at the beginning of the layout. Because don't forget, we're setting game over to true as a default to our global variable. But once we touch the screen, it sets it false. So on the start of the layout, when we reset, we're going to want to set it back to true again. There we go. Restart and we're back to true. Same thing if we hit a pipe. Again, the game continues. And yep, yeah, we're good to go. Now we need to create a title screen that will allow us to enter the game. So let's go ahead on layouts, add a layout. We're going to add a layout and an event sheet. And I'm going to call this one title screen. And I'm going to drag it to the top. And then event sheet two, I'm going to call it E title screen, just so I know where it's linked. Just make sure that you've got in the properties here, title screen and the event sheet linked to it is e title screen. We're going to change the size because it's a one screen that we need. And then we're going to double click and we're going to add some text. In fact, do we have generic text? No. So let's go ahead and add some text. I'm going to call my game Flappy Turd. Artwork's coming later. Pop that at the top there. In the center. I'm not too worried about the fonts right now. I'm going to pretty this up in a future episode. Now let's double click. Let's create a button. I'm going to click on Sprite. I'm going to add a Sprite in. The width is going to be 32. The height is going to be 16. And the origin point is going to be in the top left. I'm now, for the sake of this tutorial, just going to give it a faint color. And there it is. In fact, that's a little bit small. Let's make it 64 by 32. Origin point should stay in the top left. And now it's a bit better. Perfect. I can go ahead and rename this text at the top here. TXT underscore generic which means I can use it multiple times and not worry about any uh, any events linked to it I'm going to write start game in that one I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and I'm going to pop it just over the box there I'm going to change the name of the sprite to btn underscore start game. And we're going to go into the e title screen event sheet and I'm going to click add an event and I'm going to say touch. And I'm going to say on tap object. That object is going to be start game. I'm going to go system. Go to layout. Layout 1. Go back to the title screen. Hit play. Now when we touch the start button. Oh, we do go to layout 1. I don't know why that wasn't. Okay. Let's go in. Make sure when because we resize it, sometimes the bounding box doesn't resize with it. So make sure. Uh, oh. Set to bounding box. Make sure your bounding box is the width of the sprite. 
Now we can tap the button and away we go. When we die, we get try again, come up on the screen. We're also going to want to display our high scores on the title screen so we know how good we are when we turn the game on for the first time. So we can go ahead and do that just by using the same code that we've got in the event sheet. Obviously, we've got the global variables up here. Um, that'll be true across all of our event sheets. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the first three blocks. Push Control C on the keyboard. I'm going to come back to the title events, Control V. We don't need that one 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 we just want to check the high score exists get it and then set it and then we can go ahead and drag out a copy of that high score place it underneath the button or just above the button and then we also lastly need this line here that's every tick display the high scores. I'm going to copy that whole block by pushing control C, push control V. We don't need to set text to score because we're not showing the actual score on the home page or the title screen. We're just showing the high score. And now we should be able to just display the high score if we make the text visible. Because remember, in the other layout, we set it to initially not visible. This one. So just make sure you've got that set. To visible and now you can see on the home screen it displays our high score i'm going to leave it right there for this episode um, between now and the next episode i'm going to go ahead and start fancying up my artwork i'm not going to put that into a video because i would imagine you guys are probably going to want to make your own art for your own games so when we come back in the next episode i will have a lot more in terms of artwork in terms of representing my characters um, that's all I'm going to do. I won't adjust the events or the actions. So don't worry about that. You can come back in and follow along as normal. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode.